Okay. And for me, if you could just start with your name and spelling. Okay, so I start? Okay. Mm -hmm. And stay with me. Ah, okay. Right. Okay, well, well my, uh, my name is Victor Legorreta. I'm a partner with Legorreta and Legorreta, uh, an office here in Mexico City. No? And, well, a little bit about the history of how I started architecture. I, I began with, uh, surrounded by architecture. My, my father being an architect, uh, all the travels that we did was looking at buildings and looking at cities. And we went at, uh, on holidays and it was always some architecture involved. We were also, uh, my house was full of books, of architectural books. So in a way, architecture was all, all around me. Uh, of course, uh, you always think of studying architecture. But uh, you are a little afraid when your father is, is, is a, is a well-known architect. You say, well, they are going to always to compare with him and, uh, and whatever. But then I, I work uh, some summers during high school here and I love it. I, I like it a lot. So I began studying. I decided to go into architecture. Um, at first, maybe it's when you're young, you're a rebel no, <laughs> by, by nature. So I didn't want to do anything with my father. So I, I went all, all the school by my own. And I was able, because of some my father's friend, I was able to work in different offices. I worked with, in an office in Los Angeles, then I worked with in Barcelona, which at that time was before the Olympic Games in 92. So it was a great time to be there. And then I worked with Fumiko Maki in Japan. And uh, I was ready to go in, in, into going to Italy for a longer period, for a couple of years, when we entered a competition for the Children's Museum in Mexico. And we, we, we entered a group of friends, and it happens that we got along very well. And, and I don't know wh what is it. I think that, that there's some chemistry <laughs> that has to do with it. Uh, my father is also a very young person. I think he loves to think young, and that, that uh, he's always open to new ideas. I mean, a lot of times I say that he's the youngest in the office, no, because he, he's always challenging and loves challenges. So, so I think that's the main reason why it has worked. I mean, so we are. It's not only myself, we are a group of young architects in the office. And I think to have the two, two generations has been working great because um, you come with new ideas, maybe you want to, to do some, uh, explore new materials or new forms. And to have also the opinion of, of, of an architect that has a much more experience and that he will tell you, well, I, I don't know how this is going to age. I don't know how this is going to look in 20 years or 10 years. So that I think that to have the two perspectives as a, uh, I think that has been very helpful. Uh, I joined the office, uh, now it's about a little more than 15 years ago. Uh, at the beginning I started the, with this work with the Children's Museum. Then I began to, to be involved in more works and, and now uh, we see all the projects, the, the two of us. In some of them are more involved, in, in other ones he, he is. But we have an, an unwritten rule that nothing leaves the office on, on, unless we are in agreement. And that sounds kind of impossible, but it, but it, it, doesn't, it hasn't been that difficult in a way. I mean, we, we too, sometimes we disagree, sometimes, uh, but, at, but at the end we find a good solution and, uh, and I think it's always improving to have the, these two points of view. Um, we, we've been lucky also to work in different places. I think we, the office started in Mexico, but now we are working in uh, we have work in the States, especially in the south part of the United States, in Texas and California. We're working in Central America, in Spain, and we're now working in the Middle East, in, in Dubai and in, the, in Qatar. And uh, we're doing a, a project in Korea, in Korea too. So to, to have this, this opportunity of giving the, well, an, an, an architecture that is based in Mexican roots to, to other countries, that has been very exciting for us. Great. Or how, how you decide what colors to, to use, in addition to, you know, client input, things like that. But hit on the geography. Well, I think... Hang on one second. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Well, I think that there are a lot of things that influence on the decision of, of, of which color to use. One is the, the geography, which is the... Uh, that affects, the, for example, the light, the landscape. I think that, that, that has a, a series of... Uh, effect on color. I mean, it's very different, different the light in New York or in London than the light in Mexico or, or that the light in the Middle East or in the desert. So that affects a lot. Another thing is culture. I think we have found that there are some other cultures that are used to color uh, and some other ones are not. I mean, the, in the States it has been more difficult at the beginning and at the end 
people love color. I mean, uh, at, at first we have found some negative reaction and they, they tend to be more conservative. And once we have done the building, they, they, they even ask for more and more and they love color. I mean, we did the, in the project we did in San Antonio, uh, we did the library at first was a shock. And, and now you see a lot of buildings around the city with color. Uh, the restaurants are full of color. Some houses, even private houses, become more used to the use of color. So a lot has to do that you are not used to it. Uh, for example, the, in, the, in the world, in, uh, in the work we're doing in Qatar, the Arab culture has, of course, has color. They use it in tile and everything. But they are not using contemporary architecture. So now they are frightening. So we did the first building. We painted only, they, they allow us only to do the interior of one courtyard in blue. And the rest is very subtle and very beige and everything. And they love the courtyard. So now in the, they ask us for two more buildings. And in those ones, they are asking for more color. So I think a lot has to do that you are, it's a thing that you are, you are not used to it. And even sometimes it comes like some funny things. We once proposed a, a, a color. It was a purple for, one, for a fence. It, and, it, and it was for, for the fence of all the, the City of the Arts project, which was uh, under the command of the, of the director of the Arts uh, Commission of Mexico. So it was a, a, a man that uh, with a high culture, and he was very intelligent. And he said, oh, you know, I, there's something I don't like about the fence. I don't like the purple. And we didn't know why. I mean, so, so at the end, we began some discussions. And, and after a week, he came back. And he said, well, you know, now I remember the house that I used to go to play as a kid, that my father, my, my parents forced me to go. It was purple. So, so that's why I don't like purple. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because people react to that. And, and after that, he said, now, now that I know where it's coming from, then painted purple. <laughs> no, so, and that happens all the time. Some people say, well, I hate. Red, why? Because and maybe they, they had a bad experience in a red place. And so, so, so it's, a, it's very personal. So, so, but, but in a way, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity. I, it, I think it's, a, it's, a, a, it's another element of architecture that, that enhances architecture a lot and that makes your, your, your life happier. And I think that's the, the end of it. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> okay. When going to you know, create a new structure, Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, like what your father said, you know, sometimes I, we think about it before we do anything. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, it's difficult to, to, to make a, a process or a rule of how we use color. You know? I, I think that certainly sometimes it comes from the beginning as a reaction of, the, of nature or, or as a reaction of the landscape. Sometimes we, we don't want to, to play a, a very strong color because we, we think it's not uh, good to... to uh, to, 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 to be aggressive with the landscape. Sometimes, I mean, we want to make a more subtle color. And sometimes uh, uh, we always say, for example, to make a, a white house in the woods, white can be the most aggressive color of all. <laughs> so it's, it's funny that people say, don't put any color, and they paint it white and maybe more aggressive. So uh, it's, it's difficult to put rules in, in colors. The thing we do is we try to, to make a lot of studies. I mean, uh, but it's more. Uh, let's say emotional or more intuitive, more than, than rational. So we do a lot of models. Now we use some, some of the computer techniques too. I mean, we do the, the renderings and we do in, in the renderings, we study different options. Or with Photoshop, we take a picture and we, we study the different options of color. And, and again, also go to the site and, and see the color because it changes when, when you have a different texture. It changes, the light of the specific place changes. So I think we, we try to do all these tests and, and there's no specific rule. The other thing, of, uh, which is even beautiful of color, is that we, I mean, with paint, is that you can change it. I mean, uh, the office uh, four years ago was, was pink, the, the entrance, and now it's blue. And probably we get tired of the blue and, and in three years we're going to repaint it. And, and I think it's, it's a thing that we, we shouldn't take ourselves so seriously. I think life is to enjoy it and I think it's good to to be able to paint a color in a, diff a wall in a different color because maybe you're in a di in different mood that day. <laughs> so I think that's, that's part of life and that's part of the, of the beautiful thing of, of paint and, and to be able to, to change the environment of a room. You know? hmm. Well, that's making it. Mm -hmm. Do well, the whole art, isn't everybody proud thing? Yeah, yes, I, uh, okay. <laughs> Well, I, I think to, to receive a, an award, 
uh, outside your country, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, uh, well, uh, any award is, is wonderful and it's something that you're proud of. I mean, may, maybe you don't work to, 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 to win an award. I mean, you, you work more for, for making a good building. But everybody, uh, when you receive an award, it's, it's a kind of a, a certification that you are doing something good <laughs> and to encourage you to, do so, to, to keep on going. And that's the way we see this award. I think that's a, uh, and even coming from a company in the US, even from New York, that for us Mexicans, New York has no color and it's all gray. Uh, and, they, and then they are giving us a, a, an award for color. So that, that's something that is saying something about us and, and say, well, okay, let's keep going and bring color to, to other places. <laughs> so that's, that's something great for us. Can you, and you keep it short, give influence in the office? As far as oh, yeah. just, uh, have, you know, lifetime achievement, he's been doing it, you know. Okay, I, yes, I, I, I think some, sometimes I, I, I wonder, you know, if it's, a, if it's good to keep going on the same philosophy in the office. And we discuss that all the time in the, inside the office. And I think there are some principles in the office that is this passion for architecture, this uh, thing of doing an, an architecture that believes in, in, in human feelings.